Okay, and um, yeah, back to the plan. So if you look at the plan, actually this week will be the last week we cover anything new. And this week we're gonna talk about refactoring the pet store app, the front, basically the back front end and changing that into a single file component and with some child components and which is what you need to do in the course three, coursework three individual work. And then <clears throat> next week, uh, we're not gonna cover anything. So in the lecture, we're gonna go through the requirement and for the coursework three, and then the same for the labs. The labs is answer your questions about coursework three. Um, actually, so, um, you should re-download uh, the module handbook, uh, which is here, and because I now added information for the coursework three individual work. Actually, I also updated the group work, um, which you should have seen by now, and um, which is because it's, the group work is due to for present this week. And okay, and back here. So next week, um, I'm going to the lecture to go through the requirements. And if we can't finish everything today in the lecture, and in terms of refactoring the front end, uh, we might spend a bit more time next week as well, just to finish the slides. And then goes through requirements for the course works for individual work and also answer any of your questions. And then week 22 will be when the course works for individual work due. And as usual, there won't be any lectures or labs. And for any questions, you can email me. And but hopefully you would have emailed me in week 20 or come talk to me on week in week 21 already. Again, don't leave everything to the very end. Uh, yeah, I might not be have time to say get back to you so you can still actually include the changes, so on and so forth. Okay. Um is there any, any questions or okay? Yeah, there's a question about um the demonstration for the group work uh -huh. and the work this week. Yeah. How would that work? Just as before. Work? Um, the individual work and um, good work demonstration. Sorry, say it again. Good work and demonstration. The good work demonstration and uh, individual work demonstration this week. How would that, they, that work? Uh, Okay, I'm not sure I understand the question, but for the group work demonstration, it's the same as before. And I, so we, I, says, I expect to be some time left after we've done the group demonstration, so that we're going to use that for the individual work, the coursework to individual work demonstration as well. Does this answer your question? Yeah. So we're going to do group them in the lab. We're going to do the group demo first and then individual ones. Okay, and we are going to be get back to the actual lecture now. Um, so, and last week, if you remember, we introduced the single file component and which is the special type of file which ends with dot view at the end. Um, it's not that different and compared to say just an HTML file, but it's a file which includes both uh, all of the HTML, CSS and the JavaScript. And it has, I mean, a little bit different tags for each part. And what we also covered is we, we used and view CRI to create a single, to create a kind of scaffolding for a new app or the new view app based on SFC. <clears throat> this is the kind of the uh, files that were created, the file structure would create for you. And so obviously all the code you will write are gonna be going to the source folder and under the source folder, you would have app view, which is your main file. Main.js is the main JavaScript file and some components. 
And in the components is where we're going to put the components we create. Here, we have form and products. Obviously, when you first create it, you don't have form and products. You only have a thing called hello world or something, and which we don't need. So what we're going to do now is we're going to and keep basically using the kind of scaffolding created by the view CRI and then create our own components, the form and product list, and also changing the view app.view, which is the main file, to become the main uh, components or the parent components of your app or the root components. Okay, and so the app.view, which is this one here, is going to be the root components. And this one, product list, um, is going to be showing the list of products. And for your coursework, we're going to be showing the lessons. And then form.view, which again is under the components folder, and will be the checkout forms. So they should display the list of lessons and have the user, sorry, the phone number and the uh, name and phone number, for example. Okay, and we made some changes to app.view, and but I think just to make it a bit easier, and because I didn't record last time, and I'm going to start from the beginning again, start from creating an empty or a default view app. And then we'll move on to the product list and the form. So we're going to move on to the product even form later. So this mostly involves copying the code from the old front end and also make some changes as well. For example, when we start to need to use the slot and the, and the events we covered before. Okay. Um, so, uh, let me open this one. I oh, couldn't. Small. Okay. Let's do this. And week 20, a kind of new folder. Let's call it demo. Okay. Uh, and I said I'm going to start from the very beginning. So I'm going to start from creating a new empty view app. Uh, let me first go to the right. Um, how many levels up? One two, maybe three. Okay. okay. And so we can see, so hopefully the, uh, the text is bigger for you, big enough for you. So you can see now, um, I'm in the folder, which is empty, and uh, gonna create an empty one. Uh, if you remember, I think it's view create pet store. So view is using the view command line tools, so CRI and create is create. And this is the name of your app, which I call pet store. Okay. And so this is the thing. So you need to choose between these. Uh, or can I just use the default? And don't use view three because it's not, not going to work with the front end you created. And if you really want, you can manually select. But and the important thing is that we're going to be using still using view, view two. Okay. And this is where it's starting to download all the files. So this is something similar to if you run npm install, it will go download all the MPN modules and their dependencies required. And then it depends on your internet connection. It will take a little bit of a while to do this. And so this essentially just does the same thing we did before when we had an, a script tag in the HTML file to load an, a view file and with a little bit extra. Okay. Okay, 
And so it's done now. And if you see the message like this, that means all done. And actually it tells you how to run or start the app. It says, and CD per store, do NPN run serve. Okay. So this one will be the folders just created. And because in the command we said, where was the command? Yeah. Uh, huh? Yeah, view create pet store. So the folder will be called pet store. And you go inside that folder and you run MP and run serve. So this is the way to start your view app. So you can see now I only have something called pet store. Um, if you see here, and you have all these files and which we saw before. And this is the folder, which where all the your code is going to go into. The rest is very similar, a node project. And so you would have package.json, and then say this will be all the node modules dependency it goes into. And the readme.md is created for GitHub repository. Uh, it didn't have, it usually would have the GitHub ignore as well, but maybe it's just because it's a hidden, so it's not shown here. Yeah, you can see there's a git ignore file created here as well. Okay, and to run your thing, just do npn run serve. And that's because, so npn, you all know, run is this command. Serve is actually a name of the script inside your package.json. So if I just to show and package.json, and you can see, and it would have a section called the script and under here have a serve. So you can similarly run npn run build or npn run linked. Yeah, these all works. And this is what actually it does is run the, your view app. So what, that's what I can do now, npn run serve. And again, I think this is only done the first time. So essentially it runs a local server and you need to open your app and just click this. And in, if you want to click this inside where you see your code, you need to hold command key and on Mac and assume there's something like a control key on Windows. And you can see that it changed to the hand and becomes a link and you can just click and it goes here. Okay. And so this is the default page and for any view app, and it always looks like that, and which is something we don't need. So we're gonna delete that in a second. And so, oh, not this one. So if we go back to the View Studio code, and if we open up on the side, so you can see, now I have a demo folder we created, and the demo folder, there's a folder called Pet Store, and and the pet store is all the files created for you. So all these ones we already had a quick look. For example, the package.json, and which gives you this serve script and all the other dependencies here. And then the main files will be under source, as we already mentioned. So this is the main file the main JavaScript file. This is the root component. So this is something we're going to update a little bit. So currently, um, um, this is a folder and um, where you put all your component files in or .view files in there. And this is assets, which we put in your pictures if it's in the front end. But in your case, most likely this will be served from back end. And unless there's other things you want to include, so these are usually non-code files, pictures, PDFs, zips. If you have any of those that goes there, uh, most likely we won't need them. Okay, and the so this is actually this file we saw. Uh, the hello world of view is this file we saw, which is not very useful, but it's created by default for any empty view app. So. The way it works, you can see in here, 
you do this import first. So import hello world from dot slash component slash hello world of view. So dot means current directory slash components. So that's this folder and slash hello world of view. Let's give you this. Okay. And then you in your actual, um, this is still part of your view app code. In the components, you say, okay, I have a component called hello world. And this is the part we covered before. We covered the once you define how um, cover the how it wants to define the components and you can import and declare it in the view instance. And then you in, use it and you here say the hello world. This is the new kind of component you defined called hello world MSG. And the MSG here is actually a uh, props, if you remember. And you can see now um, in the hello world component itself, and it has a prop called MSG. So expecting the parent component to pass some information to it using the MSG, which is the name of the props. And this value was, will be welcome to view. And this can be displayed used here. And you can see here, it display whatever text it passes it to as H1 heading of the page. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we don't need this file. So we're going to delete this one. So we're going to delete this one. Okay. And we're going to, we're going to make some changes um, to the view files to change that into the root component of our, our, our app. Okay, and so this one no longer works because the files were deleted. And I'll probably would, uh, stop the server here as well. Okay. Okay, and so this is like the setup. Okay. Um, Okay, um, so in terms of the root component, it's mostly including the heading of the Pesto app. <clears throat> so this will be, okay, maybe look at the, the template part first. Okay, and so the first thing you need to know is you can define name, which is okay. So the data is now a function. You can't just say data, column, and then followed by a JSON object. It doesn't work anymore. Even if it would work for root component, in this case, app.view is a root component. And, but for all other components, it has to be function. So we're going to change everything to function now. Okay. And um, so again, these code you can just copy directly from your previous front end. Uh, we can do a little bit here now. Um, uh, let's switch, switch to editor. Uh, so it's this part. Okay, so name is, and um, I'm going to import some components as well, and we'll, we'll kind of come to, back to this later. But also, what we need is data. Again, so this is the function now. So essentially, what you use to put just follow data now put inside of the return. And site name, this really is not necessary. Um, but that's what we did before. So we might still just keep it here. It doesn't really like this. Okay, so it's on nowhere, that's fine. Okay, so we have a card, which is the shopping card. And <clears throat> we might have lessons. Oh. And a few other things. And so the lessons might be where you store the list of lessons. Uh, but actually, in our case, we probably don't need this one. And because the lessons is going to go into uh, 
the product list. We might need it and depends. And we're gonna come back to this later. Okay, and so this is my data. And then we're gonna still have my message section. This is the same as before. Maybe, let me see. Okay, I have a method called the show checkout. If you remember, this is the method that's going to be used to switch between the product list and the forms. So my still use, I haven't copied the code over here, just to define this one for now. So it actually doesn't do anything. Okay, and this is what we do for now for the, uh, the script part. So we now come to the template part. Okay, and currently, uh, that's the div, and these are two lines, which shows a logo of view, uh, which the file itself will be inside of the assets. Again, we're not going to display this, so we can delete this as well, or can leave it up to you, because we're not going to use it anyway. Okay, and then we use this component, and this is the previewed component which is imported here and declared here. Again, we, are, we don't need these two, so let's just take it out. And instead, we're gonna do our own one. Now we're gonna have a header section. Okay, and then we're gonna show H1. Okay, and so that's because we define the site, site name here, so I can use this, it will displace value as H1. Okay, and then we do this one. Let me close this. So we also do this line here, and this is the button that you use to. So it will be a button. Clicked, and we're going to run show. Checkout. So when it's clicked, we're gonna run show checkout, which is this one. Show checkout. Okay. And here, because it's inside the code, so the visual studio code is saying this is a text string, so it does not match it to any method. You have to so you have to manually make sure it's working. Okay, and then in the actual button. And you might show the length of your card. Uh, this is going to be this dot card dot. So you can see the card is what we defined here. It's an array, so I can use the lens. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is what we need to do for this part. Uh, if I delete this one, or can comment it out, and comment these out for now. And these are the things that we don't need. So now we can run, and what it does, it will display a very simple app, much simpler than before. It only has a heading and a button, nothing else yet. And that's okay, and that's where we start. And you can add other things in there if you had more code from your front end. Okay, and so you run. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me just clear this again. So you run npm run serve. Yeah, so hopefully this is going to do it very quickly. And then you refresh this page. Yeah, and so you can see now, and um, we only have a title and the button. Currently, the length of my shopping cart is zero, and you have a checkout. When you click, it doesn't do anything yet. Yeah, it should look like this. That's completely fine. And also, and there's a little bit default formatting I didn't remove. So this is the formatting again that comes with the template. So that's why I can see the titles and the font. Is slightly different. 
and you can change it to your own ones or use it up to you. Uh, I can just leave it there for now. Okay, and so this is the app dot view. Okay, and the other thing we said we're going to do two more components, and <coughs> and these will be the child component. One of them we're going to do display the list of the product, or you can use that for very similar to the list of lessons. Okay, and then for this part, and there will be very little change. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so first, if we are, let's go back to the code. Okay. And first, you need to create a file. Um, let's in your components folder. Currently, is empty. Let's say new file. I got called this product list dot view. Okay, and you need to remember now you are using single file components the extension will be view. And it doesn't have to go inside the components and directory you put in the same folder as app of view as well and that's also okay. And this just make it a better organized structure using the structure view design. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm not using any capital. I think it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay. So that is a re recognized template. Um, so this, as a single file component, it would have templates and then a script. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a bit different. Script section, and then finally the CSS section, which we call the style, which we don't need, so I'm not gonna create it now. So all these goes into the template section. So that would uh, basically display the list of lessons. Uh, so it's using a V4. Okay, so your product needs an ID, so it can be bound as a key. And it displays all these things. So it's including the pictures and then including, yeah, this is a VHTML. We might not use that anymore. Showing the price, description, uh, available stock. And then this is the button, add as a product to, to cart. Okay. And these, these are the things it needs to display. And so I can just copy over the, all these things. Give me a bit of time and also format it a bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I might change this one a bit. Instead of using VHTML, I can just using this. Come on. I always delete everything. It's very stubborn. So I have to move this one from. We could just say something like this. Okay. Uh, okay. So first, obviously, we need to define these ones. Yeah. Let me see if this is in my next few slides. Yeah. Ah, great. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, in terms of the script part for the product, 
and you need to write export default. So this is this is a bit different, and uh, you need to this way to say create a component or module very similar to actually JavaScript if define its own modules, and you have a name called the product list. This is where it's going to be used when it's a component. It will be used. As, this is a name, and you have a data, and you return and some information. Okay, and in your actual coursework. And the products, you're probably not gonna, you're not allowed to define this. You would have already built this part. And in the second coursework, you can load the values of your products from a, a your backend server. You can send a request, it's gonna return everything to you like this. In here, for demonstration purpose, I can just hard code this part. Okay. Uh, so this will be in my script side. So I can export report. Okay, and the name of my component is going to be called product list. And then data again. This is going to be a function which returns a JSON object. Uh, first, it actually has the products, which is an array, which have okay these properties and the ID one title. Uh, yes, it needs title. It has to be in the quote because it's a text string. We need a title and then a description. Ah, say image. Uh, let's call this an I don't know cat food png and then description. Uh, Bag of cat food. What else does it need? Okay. Uh, inventory. Oh, well, I forgot a comma. Oh, I need also need price. I don't know how much. 15 cat food cost. Available stock. And let's say we have 10. Okay, and obviously you can add more. Uh, why this thing doesn't like it? Hmm? Uh, uh, okay. It should be called description. Okay, same with it. Okay, and you can add other things in here as well. For example, this add to cart uh, function and it should go in here as well. So we we'll go in here. We will have methods and we have add to cart. Currently, it doesn't do anything yet. It will be empty. Okay. Okay, and here we're going to talk about the location of the image files. Um, so there's two places you could put this. You can either put them inside asset, or you can put them in the in public. Okay, so um, in my example in the code. Uh, when I binding the source is to product.image, where the image itself only including the file name with no pass whatsoever. And to make this work, uh, the image has to go inside the public folder. Again, in your case, 
and the files should be served from backend if you've done that and use the express.static, I think. And then you, so this is just show you, for example, if you need to uh, serve the pictures from the front end, this is where it goes. Okay. Um, okay and so in in my case let me find the example file so i can actually use it uh, so it will actually show you a picture and uh, images no that's not here this store public okay so i have this yep let me just use that picture I'm gonna add in my public folder. Uh, I'm gonna call it um, cat food. Okay, and so hopefully it will display when we get there. Okay, and then one of the things uh, we need, don't need this one anymore. Here is this add to cart function, or add uh, here it's called add product, and um, it's equivalent to here. Uh, why it's called add product? Uh, okay, and here it's called add to cart, and the other one called add product. It's slightly inconsistent, but it's the same thing. Okay. And if you remember, so the shopping cart itself is in the main, uh, I can close this one now. What is this one? Uh, okay. The shopping cart itself um, is in the main component or the root component, okay? And then when we need to add a product to the shopping cart, we need to add something to the cart. And we mentioned a few times in the previous lecture or lectures, and um, saying a child component, in this case, the product list, should not edit the data of its parent component, in this case, app. Okay, so here we should not try to add something to the cart directly inside the product list yeah i mean currently and you couldn't do it anyway because you don't have cart inside this product list dot component and if you say uh if you if the, you say something here um sure so you push something in and you say cart.push.product, and this is gonna get you errors. And because cart is not something defined here, you wouldn't know, yeah? And so instead of what we're gonna do is we're gonna to send, to trigger an event, and then that event would ask the parent component to add a particular product to the shopping cart. And so what we're going to do is inside the product list, when you either click the button, you're going to check the event, and then the event is going to be received by the app dot view. It will respond to that event, similar as you respond to a click. This is a response to a different event which you defined here. And then when you re when you receive that event, you can add something to the cart in here. Okay, obviously, when that happens, you need to know what to add to the cart. So to do that, we, when we trigger or we, we emit an event, we're going to include in the actual product as well. So then the parent will just add that product into the array here. Yeah. Okay, and let me see how we are doing in terms of time. Okay, we're halfway through, so it might be a bit tricky to finish everything. Uh, okay, so this is what we do here. So 
when we use a click, you can have this function and this function would including the product and the parameter. And if you look at the code here, during the V4, well, I, don't know, I have to go here. During the V4, the product is an element from here. And we're gonna just pass the entire product itself as a parameter. So we're gonna emit a event. So that's the name of the event. And you can call it other event. And then in this event itself, also including the product ob object, which can then be uh, added to the Carter array inside the parent component. Okay. So we're definitely not going to do that. So instead, we're going to do this dot dollar sign image. So you're going to see this one quite a bit. So dollar sign is one. Often you see it in front of those view commands you want to use. Okay. Um, okay, let's call add product. Again, the name of the particular message you can choose. The other event, then we can choose whatever makes sense. And they're going to also pass the product. Okay. And so, so this part or this part emit an event or create an event. And then this one is passed to the parent so it can be added to the array. And the shopping cart, because the shopping cart array is not inside this. Okay. And obviously, and this is a design choice. And it's also possible to have the shopping cart array inside product list component. Okay. And then, but then the, the, there comes the difficulty because later on we have another child component, which would be called form, which is needs to display the shopping cart, whatever is in the shopping cart. And there's no easy way for product list to pass that to the form component because they are siblings, they're not parent and child. There's no easy way to do that. So that's one of the reasons why the shopping cart is inside the parent component rather than inside the product list here. Okay, and um, add product. Yeah. Okay, and so that's all we need to do. And for the product component itself, and then in the main component or the root component, you need to first import. and then use it. So here, you can see here, this is what we've done before. And, and now we just need to change this to, I think it's called the product list dot view. Okay. And again, here, we're gonna call my component. Uh, this is a bit like this. This is a bit compact. I will just call the product list. Okay. And then we're going to use this customized component inside the root component template. So we have the button. We're going to actually, after the header, we can add product. Okay, and this way would already include it, the product list. But also, what we want to do is say we want to say when a this is changed again. So, when an event happened, we want to respond to something. So it says, oh, sorry, this is the event. 
so when the add product event happened, we want to do something. Yeah, so this will be the thing defined here. So that's what say we're gonna say at add product. Okay, and this is very similar to something here. Say add click. So when click happens, do something, and this says add product. So that have to match uh, the event. It emits the here. It's called add product. You have to make sure those match add product. And when that happens, um, I want to run the function called add to cart. Okay. Obviously, I need to define that method yet because it doesn't get its own. So add to cart um, product. And so you can see here, this product is going to come from this one here. When the emit is going to pass something to you, and that's going to be passed to here. You don't need to include, let's say, add to cart product here or add part here. Okay, and again, this is. It's going to be relatively easy. So what it does, so we're going to do this dot cart, which is this currently is empty. We're going to push the product. Okay. Okay, and now it should work by now. And um, so I'm going to just run the whole thing again now. Ah, it's still try to run. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, so I'm going to stop this one and restart. It's going to rebuild. Yeah. Oh, local host. Okay. There's some errors. Uh, just do the inspection, say console. Okay. It says this is not defined. If you can see this part is not defined. So, so I probably typed it somewhere twice. Yeah. Oh. Where did this one come from? No? Okay. Yeah, there's something wrong here. I did not know how that comes from import product list from that. And then this one, we need this. Okay. Now, at least I can see this one now. So that looks a bit better than the previous ones. Let's do have warnings. Show checkout is not defined on the instance, but referenced during the renderer. Uh, I think I defined the show checkout. I think it might be a spelling error. Uh, show check. Or uh, maybe the capital. No, huh? it's the same. Oh, it's oh. the spelling. It's the spelling. Yeah, this one is wrong. Okay. Uh, it should automatically recompile. Uh, maybe not refresh. Okay, now it's happy. Yeah, so I misspelled this bit. Uh, okay, and so you can see now, this is actually more or less working. So this is our root component, it's working. And we have this part, which comes to our, uh, this product list component. 
which loads every a list of products and display, show the pictures and everything titles, and have this button. Okay. And then when I check click this one, ooh, oops. It should add things to the checkout and it says method add to cart is not defined. Ah. Did I misspell it? Add to cart. Uh, add to cart is not defined on the instance. Hmm? Found in product list. Uh, how can you find the product list? Ah, uh, okay, okay. And so the error is here. So you really just need to look at the error message. And it says this one is not defined. And, but also it's actually, you can see later on, it is about the product list. So that's not the main components. So you should check the product list instead of app.view. And then here it says add to cart. So what I did is actually, I again misspelled here. So this has to be capital T. Okay, and, and that refresh. Okay, and add to cart. Okay, and it's actually worked, you can see. And this dot checkout, it has one inside the checkout now. Uh, let me see if I have the view, developer tools. Uh, come on, view. Well, still, I have to. Infect view. Okay. Yeah, you can see your root app and cart app. Ah, I refreshed it, so it's zero. And add one, two, and you can see this is the object, the entire object get added. Okay, so all that part is working now. So we had the first component, which is called the product list. You can, and also the add to cart button is working. It adds things. It sends a message, then the root component would, and respond to the message by adding a product to the shopping cart. Okay, and so now we're gonna move on to the, the second component, which is the form. So that's for the checkout. Okay, and just as before, and we need to create that inside the component folder. Again, this is optional, but usually it's a good practice to put it in the right place. Uh, we're going to put form view. Okay. Uh, okay, so obviously the first there will be template. Uh, which we don't have anything yet, but we're going to start with the script part. We're not going to... We're going to export, we're going to do default. A bit different. Okay, so the name, I'm going to just be called form okay and this is the part and um, gonna be a bit different and so the requirement says for the checkout page you need to display the list of the items or products can add it to the cart and but the cart itself and it's not inside the component so inside the form you don't have access to cart directly so that is something you have to get from parent so this needs to be passed using the props. So you need to dec declare here. And then you can use it later on, just as it is an array. Okay. Yeah. And there's also the other things um, useful to explain. So first, um, you have this square bracket means it's an array. And this is not saying the cart itself is an array. This is just saying, 
for this component, it can have an array of um, props and it can have more than one, two, three, four, ten, even hundred. And in this case, the props array only has one element, which is called card. And it has nothing to do, this array has nothing to do with the card, what the type of card is. It just says, I can have a props called card. But what the card is, is a numbers, a strings, or a rain object, it doesn't know. Okay, and then we have the data function again. Okay, here you have to use data because it's a child function, it's not the root component. Sorry, it's a child component. Okay, uh, we're going to return main. Okay, so these are at least two fields, you might have more. Okay, so we're starting to set up. Okay, and um, so what here do um, is we're going to display uh, the list of the items in the shopping cart, and we're going to display this using V4. Uh, this, this is the same as before, nothing different. Okay, and so this is going to go into the template section of the form component. Okay, let me check how we're doing in time. Okay, I've got a half an hour, so... Let's see how we have time to come. Okay, and so we go back to here. So inside template, I'm not gonna type everything here. Just uh, save me a bit of time. I'm gonna copy paste it here. Format a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna show this is a checkout and it displays the list of the pro and added the products. And V4 for product in cart. This is the cast, comes from the props. The, I'm gonna show this. It's only showing the product ID, uh, which is not very interesting. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe I'll at least maybe show product.title. And like I said, it's a little bit more informative, just showing the ID. We have a, then have a button which allows you to remove. Uh, okay. So basically in this part, displayed list of products, you might want to show more. Um, but here, we only showing the title and then followed by a button. And this is the part which you can actually and enter the name and address. And then with the submit button, and you might have some logic to check the name and address, which you have done before. And you can see we use V model to link uh, the, this particular input to the name, which is this name here. And the address address here. Um, okay. Okay, um, so we here have this button and to remove a product from the shopping cart. And as we, it's similar to adding an item to the shopping cart because the cart itself is not inside this component. So instead it's gonna emit an event and tell the parent component which cart to remove. So if it will emit an event, but also for that particularly event, it's going to including the information, actually the product itself, the one to be removed from the shopping cart. Okay. Uh, ah. Right. I skipped the, did I skip the emitting part? Uh, very quickly. Oh, okay, so this is already importing the the component inside the root. So we're going to do this one quickly here. 
Why is it coma? Data, end of data, and I have methods. And then we'll have the particular method we call, okay, we, we're not, so we first say, for example, add click, we're going to call something, I don't know, remove, and then we're going to, including the actual product as well. <clears throat> Here, I have remove product, actually product, and uh, then we'll just say, ah, what is it, I forgot now. This dot, yeah, emit product. Yeah, and this dot emit. Okay, and the first is the name uh, of the event, remove product, and then actual, the thing, the things you want to pass on, in this case, will be called a product. Okay, and so hopefully it worked, and if not, most likely. And then we're going to do something here. Okay, and then we need to import the items in inside of the main component or the root component. Uh, it's very similar. So we will go here. And we're going to import form from uh, dot slash components slash form dot b. Okay, um, that import, and then we're going to use it here. So have the product list. Okay. Uh, and here is core checkout. Okay, maybe I'll call it checkout just not to confuse you. And you can call it form and just make sure again it's always referred to as form in the code. Okay, so this I'm now using the checkout. Okay, and then uh Okay, then we just add the checkout components inside the form. Yeah, and so this is where the switching comes in. So we have a button here, which you should choose to dis display either the product list or the checkout. I call it checkout. Yeah, and for now, I'm not going to switch in between these two, but that should something you should know. How do you use um, the change a value of a variable and then it depends on the variable, which would choose display either of these. Okay. And the first thing you need to do, or a little bit different, is for this one, it needs uh, props. As we said, it does not have the cart, but need it. Um, to display the items in the shopping cart. So we need to pass it to the V form. So we can see uh, the props is here, I just caught the cart. Okay, and so we're gonna just do that here. Uh, we're gonna say here. For the, the, the um, the column here is the shot for V bind. It's not for add, it's a V bind. So I'm gonna bind the card. This card is the name of the props. So that's the card. I'm going to equal to card. And the second card uh, is the card here, which is the array. So I'm gonna pass that to the card. Yeah. And also, and similarly to this one, it needs to respond. So when there is a remove items from the card message from or event triggered by the child component to respond, I need to respond. 
So I have to add uh, what is the name of the event. It's going to emit remove product. Okay. So at remove product, and I'm going to run the function remove from card. Yeah. Obviously, I haven't defined this one yet. We I don't have it here. Um, so I'm going to do here. Uh, remove what that called remove from part the product uh, okay so this, again you should have the code for this already from the previous coursework let me see what will be the easiest way and maybe a for each Ah, and this will be card dot for each. This is going to be called a product. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, there's actually a few things if. Okay, I can't call this one product because then they're going to have the same name and here for each, okay, product two, if product two dot ID equal to product dot ID. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do product dot infantry. I think it's called infantry. Where is the actual product? Uh, will be in here. Infantry, yeah. So I'm going to increase the infantry, and then I will need to cart dot array dot uh, what should I know? No, it's not showing me. Um, it's called splice. Sync uh, card dot in uh, is that index? I can't remember now. Product. Uh, and let me just quickly check. Yeah, I think that's correct. It's going to be the index from which it moves. JavaScript array index off. No. Uh, I think maybe it's index off. Anyway, and we're gonna find. And so what I did here is I increased infantry by one. That's when I'm removing it. And then this card, the splice, removing the position will be the card dot index of basically where this product is inside the card and remove by one item. Okay, so let's see if that's going to work. So this is, should be the finished app.view file. And we import both 
Okay, and we have these, we import these two child components and we, we declare them here. In the data, we have this name and just the cards. In the method, we have show checkout, add to cards, and remove from card. Okay, those are these three ones without details. Okay. Uh, let's see if this works or not. Um, let's see there's errors and then restart. Hmm? Well, okay. An error, cart is not defined. Okay. In app.view, cart is not defined in line 31. Uh, line 31, ah, of course. I have to say this.cart and then this dot card displays this. Okay, so that works now. That's one error fixed. Let's try again. Okay, I'm gonna have errors now. Hmm? Do not use building or reserve the HTML elements as component ID. Okay, what did I use? Uh, ah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so here I call my component form, uh, which is a bad name because the form is already an HTML element. Uh, okay. Let me change that. Again, so this is a warning. It's not gonna break the code, but again, it's just not a good practice to do. Okay, I'm gonna change this to checkout. Components, yeah, it's gonna have errors for now. And I need to change the files as well. And so this one have to rename to checkout. And then inside actual checkout file, which is already open to here, I'm gonna call this. Uh, it's gonna, yeah, now it's happy. So I just renamed that thing to checkout. Okay, um, yeah, I don't know what that. So you can see now the checkout actually shown here, which is not very nice, um, but, oops. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, and then we've got this warning and duplicates detected 101. Okay. And, the reason of this is when I'm using, uh, let me see how much time do we have? Okay, uh, not much more. Okay, but I'll explain. So the, the, the reason we have this error, it says duplicate keys and it finds in the checkout part in here in the checkout, I'm gonna here um, iterating through um, the the products in my shopping cart. I'm I'm using the product dot ID as the ID, and for each items in the array, this really should be unique. But in this case, it's all the same because it only has one and cat food. It is always the same so that's why i get that but i hope it should still work it's a warning so if i oops so when i click remove it actually removed two if you remember it could be the result of this can i not have an id okay. 
doesn't have it's not happy at all if I don't have a key. Okay, so it must have a key. Uh, so let me see, what else can I use? Country, ah, uh, what else? So I have to generate something else. Um, uh, can, you, can you just do it an ID? Oh, would it work? Give what? Get rid of ID and just use product in the key. No, you're not supposed to using product, which is an JSON object, adds a key. And if even if you use it, it's exactly the same product. You need to generate a different key. And for this, unfortunately. Okay. Um so um, we're going to have to, just because we're running out of time, we're going to fix that error maybe later. And it's not something you can, maybe it'll take a few minutes just to solve this. But I guess you know why we're calling the problems. And so the other solution may be say, uh, let me refresh this one. Ooh. So I have to recompile this thing. Okay, now I'm having new errors. Uh, oh, I didn't save. Okay. Let's run again. Okay, yeah, uh, fresh this one. Okay, yeah, and um, so I can add two cards. And at least this, if you have only one item, so there's no errors, and that should work. If I click remove, it should work. Uh, oh, actually I had the problem here. The, at the available stop is not working. So it's not uh, identifying, uh, sorry. Is it, was it working before or no? I need to change in the product list. Uh, product, ah, okay. The name is different, just infantry should be. Okay, now it works. Or oh, add to cart. Uh, Okay, I didn't, that didn't update either. So we're not, okay, it emits here. Um, this dot cut, yeah. And then product dot infantry uh, minus one. Okay, let's try to run again. Add to cut. Okay, and remove. Yeah, okay. Okay, so at least that should this should be working now and accept and for the checkout we need to find the different key and for the items. And as I said, the other options is say instead of say cat food and have four cat food, you have like a cat food four. Every time you increase, click you increase the number of cat foods in the infantry. Yeah, but that's uh, requires a different solution. Okay, and back to slides. Okay, and um, we're going to cover the the rest. Let me see. Uh, so that's the latest. Okay, so we covered this part as well. Say, 
the root component has these two child components and it contains the shopping cart array, but it does not have the product array. So this product array is currently in uh, the product list, which is this one here, yeah, which you load. And it has these methods to do these things, to add product to shopping cart, remove product from shopping cart. And we have these two inside the root component because the child component should not modify data in the parent component, which is a root. Okay, and this is the HTML template and exactly the same as we've done before. We're not switching between these two. Okay, we're going to stop there now and we are running out of time. And so we now kind of have the old apps running already, more or less. The pet store, you have the list, you have the checkout forms, it's all the uh, props and the events are working. And next week, and we still have a few more slides, and we're going to update the code a little bit and to make it works even better okay uh we gonna stop there now